Right, just a short video today. We've got an NI440DX here, and this has a strange problem on transmit. You might have seen this if you've owned one of these yourself. Um, I believe it is a little bit of a common problem, but I just wanted to um, use this video to show you how useful a thermal camera is uh, in this instance. While not an essential tool, uh, it's a very useful tool if you do have one, and they can be picked up fairly reasonably nowadays. Um, I use a, a FLIR 1, which is um, quite, a, quite a common camera that you see a lot, some of the other YouTubers using, which just attaches to the bottom of your, your smartphone there. I want to show you this fault first anyway. So we pop the, uh, pop the radio into transmit, and uh, we'll key up. And you can see our needle is over there. Now you'll be able to notice if uh, when it stays on for a little period of time, that that will start dropping back. And this is how the user noticed. And looking at the power, you'll soon see as it warms up and something's getting warm in there that it's not happy now I've actually got a little table fan blowing across me because it's actually a warm it's warm in the office now but you'll see it's just dropped already and you'll see it slowly going down we're still keyed up can you see that you see the needle slowly dropping and I, I tested this last night and it was dropping all the way down that's the power dropping all the way off and you'll see on the signal meter that the actual it's doing the same and it will go all the way down all the way down to you but you're literally getting nothing there we go okay so let's pop the thermal camera on and see if we can see any culprits right now we've got the radio into transmit we can start to see parts of the radio warming up you can see looking at the board there's a transistor I mean, obviously the, the drive stage is getting hot but there's a transistor getting really hotter than I would expect a pre-driver transistor so let's just um, look at what happens when we squirt some think cold some cold air on that because we're still in transmit mode and the powers drop right off so we'll get um, we'll put the thermal camera down and we'll get some spray and we'll just hit that look there you go the powers pop back up and it's that we can see it's that transistor there Q5 and uh, eventually obviously when it gets hot again it will it will the power will roll off so I'm pretty sure that's our dodgy component um, so let's take that out and test it and put another one in and see if that fixes the problem right the device is a 2SC1675 and what I'll do is I've got a, a scrap chassis out of the drawer and I'll take an equivalent out of that and uh, rather than just use a sort of a cheaper out of the box job we'll take one Japanese component out here swap it over but let's just pop this on the tester to see if it's uh, is a goer or not um, imagine if we artificially heat it up it'll probably fail and cold it does it is testing okay but a fairly decent gain there HFE of 105 so we'll have to find something with a similar gain otherwise it's going to affect our transmit power and um, we don't want that so we're gonna have to find a transistor with a a similar gain. We'll just do one more test. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. It's definitely got a problem. Right in the driver stage of this um, old Beta 1000 scrap chassis, we've got a 2SC1318, uh, which I think will be a suitable replacement. So we shall fish that one out and pop it in the tester. Okay. So this transistor has got an even higher gain, a HFE of 141, and it's exactly the same pinout as the other one. So we might even be able to squeeze a bit more power out of the radio with this. So uh, let's pop it in and um, see if we can. Right, subsequently after changing the transistor, we've got no transmit or receive. Now I suspect we're back to our uh, guilty uh, component, this relay here. So we'll, um, we'll swap it over and we'll put a new relay in there and see if we can rectify the problem. Right. This, is, uh, this took rather a bizarre turn really. I changed the transistor. The one that was getting hot there uh, and I was getting transmit but I was only getting it on channel 30 uh, the, uh, the the input from the channel selector switch didn't make any difference at all um, so I very quickly suspected um, the synthesizer chip which was an LC7136 which is unusual for this chassis because they're normally the LC7137 anyway it quickly became apparent that that, that had gone down 
Um, so whether that going out took out that transistor, I don't. I can't see why it would do. Looking at the circuit diagram, um, but certainly the synthesizer, synthesizer uh, was uh, was faulty. So that 7136 has come out. We've put the 7137 in, and now we've got all our voltages as we should, and we are getting transmit. And during all that as well, the uh, the panel, uh, the meter bulb decided to go. But you can see we're getting our transmit now and we're not getting uh, any drop off at all. It's absolutely fine. There you go, it's a bit of a fiddle to do the bulbs on these. You have to drop the front face off, but um, I've got some uh, nice little Chinese instrument bulbs which work nice in these. It's 80 milliamp at 13 volts, which matches the original very nicely. So we'll sling all that back together. The NI440DX uh, had a faulty drive transistor and then uh, ultimately a faulty synthesizer and a faulty relay. Hopefully uh, this is all fully repaired now and we'll have to fight another 40 years. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And this is a close range test with the President Randy 3. Uh, stood outside testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog.